Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, solve pre webinar on watercourse and wetland design. For those of you here in the live version of the webinar, please ask questions and engage with us through the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar panel. As usual, we'll address all the questions at the end of the webinar. And for those of you watching from YouTube in the not so distant future, please ask any questions in the comment section below. Okay, so this is the first webinar we have hosted of this kind. As our pro product's name suggests, our specialty is centered around roads. Now, despite our product's name, RoadEng works really well for other corridor and linear design features, including streams, channels, runoff run river, and pipeline projects, to name a few. Today, we will be focusing on wetland and watercourse design, and we're going to show setting up the topographic terrain model, setting up cross-sections to represent the ditch channel, creating horizontal and vertical alignments for the drainage ditch, viewing construction co costs as you design, designing non-linear features such as wetland catchment area, islands and irregular features, balancing catchment cuts and fills, and we're most likely, if we stick to schedule, um, we'll, be calculate, we'll be also showing you how to calculate catchment capacity. And with this, I'm now ready to pass over my screen to our resident training manager, Matthew Dickey. All right, thanks, Andy. Uh, all right, yeah, so I'll uh, go through a quick example. As Andy said, it's uh, our first time doing a, a wetland webinar. Um, the project is, uh, a fictional one. I just grabbed some uh, LiDAR data uh, that was publicly available. So if you happen to recognize your, the area here, um, yeah, no worries. It's no plans for this actually uh, being built uh, uh, as far as I know. It would be a weird coincidence if it was. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start today uh, focusing on the wetland side of things. Um, and then once we get that designed, uh, we'll switch over and do our uh, drainage channel. Um, so first I'm going to start by building the surface to design from. Uh, so I'll make my tin uh, out of the LiDAR data. Uh, then I'm going to actually design my uh, design my uh, catchment area, add in some irregularities. So for wetland you'll usually want some shallow sections, some deep sections. Um, and uh, yeah, and for any earthworks project, it's nice to have things balance out so you don't have to haul a bunch of material in. So we'll talk about that. Uh, then we'll switch over and do our uh, little watercourse design here. So this is just a, a quick example showing us kind of where we're going. And uh, so that's the wetland. Here we've got our uh, drainage way. And let's go to the starting from scratch. So I'm just starting in the train module. I'm going to insert a file. Uh, for this, I've got a shape file that I'm just going to add in here real quick to kind of delineate the area that I build my tin for. Uh, so we've got that. I'm going to grab my LiDAR data set. I'm going to thin it based off of that feature that we've already added in. Um, this is an optional step. Uh, I just want fewer points so things uh, calculate quicker. Um, so there, we've got our uh, area of interest defined, and then outside of that area of interest, we're going to skip all points. Now that's uh, just uh, sorting out which points it actually wants to bring in. Oh, and it's done. And through this uh, presentation, um, there's going to be a few lulls, or I'll just have to click and wait for something. Uh, if we hit one of those and uh, there's questions added to our panel, um, I'll try and answer them as we go. Otherwise, if we don't have time to answer them as we go, uh, I'll address them at the end. So we've got our LiDAR points in there. We can see down here we've got uh, 200, or sorry, 2 million and uh, almost 300,000 uh, points. I'm going to take that and make a surface of it. So I've clicked Terrain Modeling, Generate, find our surface uh, up here and then I'm going to build contours as well. 
So for this, I want my contours, major contours in 10 meter intervals, minor contours in 1 meter intervals, and there we go. So software builds the actual surface uh, fairly quickly. The contours are going to take a, a moment here to calculate. Just while that opens up here, I'm going to jump over and open another instance of train. Um, so for the, the nonlinear infrastructure portion of this, I'm going to use several instances of train, uh, have the different files saved separately, and I'm going to uh, treat each train file uh, more or less as a layer. So I can be working in one uh, train file with my design and then target the other uh, train file for a target surface if I'm grading out to it. Uh, for example. That'll, if that doesn't make sense now, it'll make more sense here in a few minutes. Yeah. Just while that calculates, um, there'll also be a few things here. I'm not going to touch on all the, the useful features for working on a project like this. I'll, I'll touch on the ones that I think are, are most important. And uh, again, it's a, uh, a fictitious uh, example. So I might not hit it out of the, the park for being a, a technically uh, perfect design, but hopefully I'll give you the, the tools you need. Just seeing here, we've got a question. Uh, how much LiDAR data could I model? Um, so there's no hard rule for that. Um, we recommend you keep the number of points uh, modeled to under 10 million. So that just kind of depends on your computer's performance. Um, and it depends what you're doing. If you're clicking around in the 3D view a lot, you may want a, uh, a bit smaller than 10 million points. If you uh, are running a supercomputer, you can probably push that fair bit. And we just delineated our area uh, based off a of polygon. You can also delineate your area based off of a, a corridor or a preliminary alignment if you're doing a, uh, a road design or other linear infrastructure design. All right, so we've got our uh, topo built. Click the 3D view. Just going to take a moment here to build it. Render that. And this is... project. So, went too far. So we want to build our wetland in this area. And let's get over here. We'll save this. So, uh, call this topo. And I'm going to uh, use this as my target surface for modeling my uh, bill slopes. And once that's done saving, I'm going to start by just uh, starting my uh, feature based off of a uh, off of a contour. So I, I could draw in a feature by scratch. I kind of want to contour around the corners here. Um, so stealing a contour makes sense. So for that, I'm just going to hit copy. Go over to this other file and hit paste. Uh, also, so I can tell where I'm at and that this is a different line, I just hit Control L to change my line type. So I'm going to make this a little bolder and heavier. Um, we can change, I don't need to use the keyboard shortcuts. We can also change all these things down here. And I want to see where things are at. So I'm going to add in my background as my top of surface. Here we are, and yeah, so I want to come up here, then I want to kind of make it more or less rectangular at the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to just break this here. So I'll hit Control Q on my keyboard. Again, you don't have to use the keyboard shortcuts. These are no good to me now. Uh, we could also select, right click, modify, break at current point. Um, so let's draw in the rest of our polygon. So we'll come down here, move that over there, and 
try and stay away from that steep section. Just to make sure that's closed, I'll close it. Now for this, um, there's a lot of points in there with the, the contour. So I'm going to just start by uh, simplifying that. So just fewer points, it's going to make it uh, fewer points to model. And so I've smoothed it out. Actually, I'm going to smooth it out or simplify it more than that. And then I'm going to use this smooth feature to smooth those out. Now that's going to be a spline curve assigned to those. And it's a, a nice, nice uh, software feature, especially dealing with something like a wetland where there's often uh, uh, habitat reasons where you want to build that. So usually there's not many straight edges in nature. Um, yeah, so we've got that in there. Now I'm using a contour. These should uh, be all the same elevation. Uh, sometimes using that uh, smoothing function, you get some weird uh, elevations along your points. So I'm just going to make sure these all have the same. So I've hit the sign button up here, and there we are. Now, I want to uh, grade to my extents here. So let's just look at my 3D view to see what's going on. So that 120 I just said controls the transparency. And I, I modeled the other surface. So that line that I've drawn here is floating above that. Meanwhile, back here, it's on the surface. So I want to grade down and uh, figure out my total footprint. So for that, I'll use the terrain modeling grading tool. Before I use the grading tool, I should note the direction uh, matters. So I want to grade to the right. I'm hitting next, and it's working uh, in that direction. So grade to the right. And I could choose a target elevation, or I could use a target surface. For my fill slope angle, um, I'm going to go with a cut of 2 to 1, and a fill of, so let's go, 20%. I want to interpolate points. And that should give me an extent. All right. Just so I can keep track of what's what, I'm going to change the name of this feature and make it modeled. So we've got the outside of our feature uh, design. We've got the cut slope over here. Most everything else is a, a fill slope. Uh, for this, I'm going to assume I want uh, vehicle access around it, so I'm going to use the buffer tool. And let's go four meter width. And we'll buffer that on the left because this was on the right. And there we are. So that's a, a break line as well. And for this one, uh, I'm going to assume that we want half a meter freeboard. Our elevation is set at 797. So let's grade down to 796.5. And we want to grade on the left. And since it's lower, I won't worry about the positive value. And we'll set that as is. So there. Now, my intention with this is that I'm not going to have high water above that. When we design our uh, channel, I'm going to break through that berm and uh, have my outlet set off at this elevation. Now, for this next step, uh, for me, I'm just going to assume that I want a really low gradient uh, slope uh, going down a half a meter for vegetation. All right, so let's actually I'll double check the direction of that. So grading, I want to go to the left. I want to come down other. I'll sign it at, let's do 2%. We'll set it at an elevation, and we'll go down another half meter, 796. Should work. Turn these guys on. And there we are. Now, let's uh, see what we've got. I'm going to generate our surface. For this, I don't care about uh, creating contours. 
actually. And before I go look at that, I forgot to do a couple things. I'm going to make that a tin boundary. And I'm going to uh, not limit my maximum side length for my triangle edges. So there we are. We can see that we're still mostly in fill, um, which is what I've expected. I was I clicked around with this data set already. Uh, and that's fine because we're also going to want to add some irregularities in here. Um, so for this, uh, let's assume that we've got it down to a, a reasonable depth to expect our, our bull rushes and whatnot to grow. And then we want a, a deeper channel kind of winding uh, through this example. So we'll come back here. Uh, we'll draw a new feature. Actually, we can do that here, new feature. And let's call it... Um, French. I'm going to define it with the mouse. I'm going to tell it uh, 796 for my default elevation. There's other ways to uh, assign that. I could just snap to one of these lines and pull in the uh, elevation associated with that. And for this, I'm uh, using uh, assumption that everything's fairly flat. Uh, we could also change our profile for our line work if we wanted to, um, or change the individual coordinates uh, for these. Um, yeah, there's lots of flexibility uh, to do whatever we want here. So let's keep this going right along. So this is one of those things as well we could do in the, uh, we could merge our surface and do it in uh, the location side of the software as well. Um, it's uh, really user preference. preference. All right, so there, I've got that assigned. Again, it's uh, fairly uh, rough, so I'm going to go back and use the smooth tool just to make sure we have that elevation assigned all the way along. 796. I'm going to ignore that. And let's uh, grade it down to another elevation. So uh, train, direction matters. Also, if you want, you can uh, add arrows. So I've used the next tool to see what direction my feature has. I could add arrows and see, OK, I want to grade to my left. And let's go down another, let's go down a meter, 795. And I'm looking at my elevation over here. This, we can make it fairly steep. And yeah, let's go with that. So there, now we'll remodel our surface again. over here it's going to re-render that and there we can see most of our trench were into cut for that and now I'd just be curious how close we actually are to balancing so I can calculate my volumes between the two surfaces And 
Well, that calculates. Let's look at the uh, questions. Um, best choice of fossils to select section areas. Oh, yeah, uh, so one of the, it's more of a comment, but one of the comments is uh, if you can look at the fi LIDAR file, you can figure out where you have higher density uh, points and uh, reduce the number of points needed in areas that are less important. So when I simplified my topo uh, data, I just uh, removed everything from a certain area. We can also reduce the density. So we can reduce density by a grid um, or uh, after import, or you can reduce it just on a order of uh, that they're read in um, on import. So we've uh, got other videos on that. I won't uh, re-show that uh, today just for the sake of time. And uh, yeah, so we've got a fill volume of uh, almost 28,000 points or 28,000 cubic meters and a cut volume of uh, 32,000 cubic meters. So that's pretty good. Uh, there's probably going to be um, some either expansion or compaction. Uh, we might be good enough to go with for the design. Um, let's just uh, assume that we are, just for the sake of timeliness. But uh, if we weren't, we could either come in here and we could regrade. So we could just go in here, grade, and we could choose a different depth if uh, needed. We don't have to delete those points and or those grade lines and uh, redo it. Another thing we could do is if we wanted to uh, shift the entire object up or down, uh, with the exception of this uh, stuff that we've graded on the outside, we can just select the, the top of bank on the outside, hit select features uh, by boundary, we're gonna select everything. And so I've got everything selected in there. I could come over here, click shift, and I could move uh, that up or down uh, however far I'd like. That's just gonna be a, a shift for that. Uh, entire data set that's selected and then I could regrade to the outside. Um, yeah. But for this, let's assume that we're good just uh, for the sake of timeliness and I'll save this. So save as uh, wetland and now when I design my channel coming out of that, um, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. Uh, but uh, I'm going to opt to merge that uh, wetland that I've designed into this topo surface so I can see both of them uh, in the surface that I'm designing from. For that, in my topo, I'm going to, actually before I forget, first save it as something new. So topo with wetland merged. And... That takes a second. Uh, will we have the uh, question? Will we have the ability to calculate coefficients and/or flow rates based on capacity and flow, as well as culvert sizing, etc.? Um, so we don't have a, a full suite of hydraulic uh, calculation tools. Um, so that, uh, in and of itself, could be its whole own software, and it is. Uh, so for that, if you're looking at uh, calculating actual elevation of your surface and flow rates and whatnot, uh, we can export our data sets uh, to a number of different well-recognized formats. Uh, one of those is as a HECRAS uh, file, so HECRAS being a, a hydraulic uh, analysis software. And All right, so that's saved. Let's do our quick merge, grab our wetland. Hit OK. Just a sec, why didn't that do its thing? So I've got a surface there. And, oh, my surface is out of date. And I was warned and I just ignored it. Uh, so yeah, when I hit shift, it made the surface go away. So let's hit save here again. And now let's merge that in. Uh, 
All right, next question while that thinks. Uh, if I have multiple zones for grading, can I get each of their cut fill volumes separately? Uh, absolutely. Um, and just before we keep going down that, uh, so if I wanted to uh, look at this kind of dog light section separate from this section, I could just draw a feature around it. Uh, so I don't want this feature to be modeled. I just want it to be a surface boundary. And let's call it zone one. Just going to make my box here. Or if I close, and when we do calculate volumes, we can volumes and surface by uh, properties boundary. So now it's going to uh, think first, and then it's going to tell us how much cut and fill we have in the polygon we've called zone one. So that's that's nice, especially on these larger projects where uh, it might not be good enough just to have it balanced across the entire uh, design. You may want to balance it in a smaller area to reduce your uh, movement costs. So there, we can see our zone one. We have uh, we have uh, 6,000 cubic meters of cut and 10,000 cubic meters of fill. Now back to Back to this, we've merged in our other data. We're going to have to remodel our surface. Oh, and uh, well, this one calculates. Um, there's a question about changing units from meters to yards to feet. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, to do that, be best to do it right from the start. Uh, when you set up your project, uh, you can choose the coordinate system and the units that you're working with. Uh, after the fact, you can change it in here. Um, you may want to scale your project then, uh, assuming that you imported it as one uh, unit and want to work in the other. You can also do a transformation off the start. Um, and then if you wanted to do a combination of both units, you could set up uh, custom attributes to uh, convert. And so this will just be a second. Once this is done, I'm going to hit save. And it's probably going to take a moment again to think, well, it saves. Uh, are there any other questions here? Well, it's uh, plugging away. Oh, uh, question about uh, watershed calculations. Um, so for this, I am uh, working in version 9, which is our, our current version. Uh, we have uh, version 10 in the works. Uh, version 10 does have some uh, added, oh, actually, sorry, I'm not being completely honest. So I was going to say that there's no uh, water uh, watershed uh, tools in it. We, in version 9, we have uh, create watershed features, so that's going to delineate your catchments uh, for the entire, entire area. Um, version 10, we have uh, some added uh, options in there, so we'll have a uh, create streams layer, so that's going to delineate your uh, flow paths for based on a minimum uh, contribution area. Uh, and there's also a uh, drainage area to point. So if I click a point over here, we can use that tool and it's going to delineate the area that uh, feeds into that. Um, yeah, so lots in the works. That's that's version 10 and uh, I won't show them right away because uh, kind of pressed for time. So I'll hit save. Actually, maybe. And now I'm going to switch over and open up location. So in location, and is that done saving? It's the wrong one. Yep. So in location, uh, I'm going to reference that train file that we just made. Browse and 
we want the merged surface. And da, 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 let's do uh, our initial alignment just based off of the center of terrain. Uh, so for this, if I had a preliminary alignment I wanted to follow, I could choose uh, to follow that. But this, we're going to figure that out. All right, so now if we look at our cross section, that's probably the first thing that jumps out as being odd. Uh, we're not building a, a road. Why does it look like there's a road? Uh, so we control our cross section geometry in this templates uh, editor. And this, the geometry that we're looking for is not much different from a road. Uh, it's got a flat uh, surface and then it's got uh, something tying to our surface or our cut slopes. So I've already prepared a few different uh, channel options here. Um, so there we can see our cut. Uh, we can build these from scratch using the e-library. So the e-library is a collection of components. I won't download it just because I'm getting time. Uh, but here we've got a roadway component. So instead of a roadway component, I used a link component to do my flat section. And then I just didn't add a ditch component. So the ditch highlighted in magenta is shown. I didn't need that. I just went from my flat section using a link component up to my slopes. So to assign that, we go assign by range. We've got a drop down here with all the different uh, uh, channel options that I have built. Click add edit. So I've assigned that for our length of our alignment. And now to actually click something in so our alignment isn't just a dot. Let's zoom in here. Let's assume I want to tie to that uh, inside of our freeboard, which we set up. And let's, uh, we can see our uh, stream is over here. I'm going to just cheat and do the straight shot. I was planning on doing something a bit more wiggly, uh, but. Let's work with this. So there, we've got this. Our vertical is just showing us uh, with the alignment set on the ground right now. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. Um, we'll do one more thing here and add in uh, curves. So you can add as many of these as you'd like. Make it whatever radius you'd like. Uh, let's do steam for this one. And, and then we'll add a vertical alignment. And this, if we just want to get the water from there to there as fast as possible, uh, nice uh, sustained uh, gradient is probably the best way to do that. Uh, if we want to kind of focus more on habitat, um, we can undulate our grade. And you could add in vertical curves for that as well. Uh, I don't think there's much of a need for that. Um, and yeah, So we can undulate it a bit here. We'd have a little bit of a pool. Uh, this template I'm using has a bit of a berm on it to kind of scrub away excess volume because all we're doing with our actual stream is trenching. So we can see at the end of this we've got a, a surplus of 800 uh, cubic meters. And we could move this around to limit that. Uh, we could also come in here and override uh, the berm height to uh, use more of that material. or just leave it as is and you know that you need to plan to haul away uh, 800 cubic meters of material or spoil it off to the side. In the 3D, you can see what we've got going on there. So there's our channel. So that's um, 
bulk of the design functionality I'd focus on if I was dealing with a project where I wanted a, a pond, a wetland, a lake, or anything like that, and then uh, transitioning into a channel. Um, there's also the side from, a, well, how do you make it look pretty? Uh, this, we have the multi-plot editor, and uh, we can just really quickly produce a pre-formatted design. So here I've got uh, an ANSI D sheet that I like to use for my design. And there's one extra chapter in there. So I've got my cross-section showing up, and I uh, can change my scale. If I want to go to 500, go on to 500 here. And we'll exaggerate that as well. So there we are. And we've got a decent design to uh, kick out the door in a little over our time. I'm six minutes over. So uh, that's uh, the important stuff I wanted to cover. Uh, there's a few things that uh, I guess we'll see if they come up for questions. Um, and we'll open it up for questions. So let's uh, look at what's come in. So when is version 10 anticipated to be available? Um, uh, I am not 100% sure on the actual date. I believe the last I heard is uh, uh, Q2 2021. And... Da, da, da. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, got a comment. Something looks familiar. I, I did make it up the cross section just for this uh, specific project. It's a little different than the one uh, the asker uh, and I put together. Um, did the alignment tie into the berm and adjust the top of the berm road, or is there an ability to add a culvert through the berm road and then taper head wall out from the edge of the berm. Uh, so this is kind of one of those things where I, you caught me not uh, hitting the design out of the park. Um, so I just basically uh, blew through it. So I just tied through here, assuming this is going to be a spillway. And uh, if we zoom in here, we can see the, the berm, which has a really re regular shape to it compared to the rest of the ground. And uh, we've got this showing a cut through that. Um, so that's one way to do it. Uh, with this, it's not perfect. Uh, there's a, a double uh, quantity there because uh, we're showing a fill in the uh, wetland and then we're cutting through that. So we could merge that little blip into the uh, wetland surface if we wanted to. Another part of that question is could we add a culvert through the berm road? Uh, so there's two different ways we could do that. If we did our uh, extents of our wetland with a, a road or some kind of linear infrastructure in a location, we could just add a pipe. We've got a, a pipe editor in here. Now this one where the main alignment is uh, what we're basing things off of, I'd want to use a different template for that. So in here uh, on our e-library, and we've got a whole section dedicated to pipes and penstocks. Uh, we could add a pipe section through that choose the option that best represents how you want to do it. Uh, all right, so how did you add the, sh oh, a question about the uh, design that I had started, um, or had open when we started. So how did I add the shading to that? And it's just again, because kind of pressed for time here, I, uh, or I guess we're already over for time. I did it by, I used the uh, the software to generate a, a contour at the uh, specific elevation that I wanted, and then I pulled that out into another instance of terrain and modeled it. Uh, for the holes where I wanted to go around something, I used a uh, negative, uh, negative tin boundary, and for the outside, I used uh, just a normal tin boundary. Then I added it into the background. I didn't show it in the plan view. 
uh, but I did show it in the 3D view. So here I've got not just my current and my topo surface, but I've added in, uh, well, I've exported that channel alignment so I could show that here as well. And then I've got a separate surface for my high water and then another surface delineating where the, the deep section is. That has elevation with it. And we can use that uh, premise as well to show other surfaces in our cross-section view. So I've just draped a, a feature through there to capture a cross-section of what's going on. And uh, we've got a question. Will this data and video be available on your website or YouTube? Um, the video will, from all our webinars, goes up on YouTube. Uh, Usually we don't share the data uh, without being asked for it. If you'd like the data, uh, there's no issue sharing it. It's just a, a fictional project. Um, and if, yeah, if you reach out to our support group, uh, ask for the data, we can uh, send you an FTP link for it. All right, and let's see. I think we're uh, at the end of our questions. Andy, are you, uh, do you no. have anything you want to close with? Um, All right. No, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for joining us today and um, have a great rest of the week. Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching another Softree webinar. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel below or tell us that you liked the video. Thanks for watching.